ओके मैडम स्टार्ट युअर सेशन यस इज माई स्क्रीन विजिबल यस यस तो स्टूडेंट्स कैन वी कंटिन्यू द न्यू सिस्टम आई थिंक आर सेशन मस्ट बी इंटरक्टिव सो प्लीज कॉपरेट मी सो आई कैन गेज अप टू विच लेवल यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द सब्जेक्ट बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स आर नॉट हैविंग फ्रॉम द साइंस बैकग्राउंड am i audible yes ma'am yes yes so now today we are going to continue the new system that is the cardiovascular system can anyone tell me which systems we have covered in the last week a quick review respiratory respiratory yeah skeletal skeletal and one more system left uh, nervous system nervous no muscular system we have seen the types of muscles right okay and uh, yes, articular yes, articular system yeah of course we have studied the joints various types of joints and all that about their movements flexion extension adduction abduction and all that so in very short we have seen the locomotor system which includes skeletal articular and the muscular system ah. okay now uh, today we are going to discuss about the cardiovascular system now in this system we are going to see about what is meaning of circulation and which are the various organs or structures which help in the process of circulation of blood like heart the blood vessels uh the process of circulation the types of circulation then uh amount of blood and the composition and functions of blood and the blood pressure what is the meaning of blood pressure and all that about blood pressure so these are contents of the circulatory system now let us start one by one the intro of the circulatory system so all of you know that in our body there is the pipeline you can say hmm? uh, pipeline just like the um, pipeline of water outside the city and we get the water supply right same here in our body there lies the pump and that pump is known as heart heart acts just like the pump it pumps the blood and the various blood vessels arteries and veins they are known as the pipelines of our body and through the pumping of the blood the blood reaches to the various parts of the bodies and the smallest unit known as cell up to the microscopic unit that is cell the blood reaches up so this is the uh, cardiac cycle how, uh, sorry the cardiovascular system which includes the circulation circulation of what blood which contains oxygen various type of nutrients various hormones and carbon dioxide and all the metabolic waste products all they are included in the blood so this circulation process is very very necessary for maintenance of the homeostatic processes in our body so a question may arise in your mind what is the meaning of homeostasis it is very very important uh, function or very very important process it is actually the self regulating process and it is very essential for maintenance of the internal stability of the body and it 
there is some adjustments in our body whether the condition external condition of the body get change there may not uh, it may not influence the internal um, body functioning so the process of homeostasis plays important role in maintaining various life processes and maintenance the preservation of our life so uh, we, we can say that uh, just maintaining of our body temperature or uh, blood pressure maintenance, blood sugar maintenance, all, may, uh, all are the examples of homeostatic processes. So these processes are life-saving processes and these are all maintained by this circulatory system. Clear? Now, the various important features are blood is the fluid that transports the various materials. The materials may include nutrients, the waste products, the hormones, antibodies, all that. Okay. And it includes the system of blood vessels. Blood vessels are various types, artery and vein. You may have heard the word artery and the vein. So can anybody tell me what is artery and what is vein? Because I have told you that it is the pipeline inside the body. But if uh, we are not very clear what is artery and what is vein, then we cannot understand properly about the functioning of the heart and the cardiac cycle and um, blood circulation process. It is not possible. So one must know about the types of blood vessels artery veins and their branches so can anybody tell me what is the difference between the artery and the vein um hello uh, uh, yes okay so artery is uh, carries uh, the blood away from the heart and veins yeah. carry blood towards the heart good any other point any other point with the help of which we can differentiate. Let us see. Arteries are, arteries are the blood vessels. They carry pure blood. What is meaning of pure? That means rich in oxygen. Arteries carry oxygenated blood, which is rich in oxygen. <clears throat> Whereas veins carry deoxygenated blood. That means it carries carbon dioxide rich blood clear so uh, o2 rich blood is carried through the arteries and the flow of direction blood is carried from the artery to the various parts of the body this is the direction of the artery arterial blood flow whereas veins carry blood impure blood from the various parts of the body towards the heart. That means flow of blood is exactly opposite. Now, uh, pressure in the artery and vein. The blood flowing through the artery, the pressure of the arterial blood is higher than the pressure of blood in the veins. It is slower, slowly, um, it flows very slowly. That means we can differentiate artery and vein with the help of the pressure of the blood. Then color also minute changes are there. Uh, if you observe the color of the arterial blood, it is somewhat dark red and bright in color because it is oxygen rich. And uh, the venous blood is somewhat dull in nature as it is uh, rich in carbon dioxide. Another important point is about the presence of valves. V -A -L -V -E -S. Uh, we are going to learn more about the valves and their functions uh, by learning about the structure of the heart. But valves are found in the veins and not in the artery. This point, I am. Um, I will not uh, express detail about the walls because I will clear your idea about wall. 
while learning uh, while teaching about the structure of the heart now uh, the important point all the arteries in our body carry oxygenated blood but there is some exception exception is there pulmonary artery now where this pulmonary artery is located also we are going to learn about uh, while uh, studying the cardi uh, cycle so pulmonary artery as it is the artery but it carries impure blood so the point must be noted that even if the pulmonary artery is the artery but it carries impure blood same here the pulmonary vein it is vein and i have told you already all the veins in our body carry the oxygenated blood but here again the exception the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood okay so this is uh, the differential point now about the location uh, with the help of location uh, arteries are located deeply inside the body whereas veins are superficial you can uh, notice the veins superficially bluish in color and um, some iv saline fluid we can uh, insert through the veins so veins are superficial while arteries are deeply located inside the body so these are five six points with the help of which we can differentiate the artery and vein so clear the difference between artery and vein clear yes now uh, next next uh, uh, the structure of the heart now let us see the structure of the heart heart where heart is located we have seen in the last uh, lecture that there is in the thoracic cavity there is a thoracic cavity in which the two lungs and between these two lungs there lies the mediastinum and in this mediastinum slightly towards the left side there is a cardiac notch Uh, located in the left uh, lung and here the heart is situated heart is conical shaped hollow muscular organ heart is having the cone shape and having the apex a very interesting part apex lies generally at the top of the any organ but here the heart um while considering the structure of the heart the apex of the heart is located downwards and the base is at the superior side so apex and base these are the two uh, parts and it is located in the mediastinum between the two lungs and again all the vital organs of our body they are protected by the bones we have seen in the last lecture like the brain situated in the brain box the organs of reproductive and organs of urinary they are located in the pelvic cavity the lungs and heart they are protected in the thoracic cavity but it is not enough and as these are all the vital organs nature have given the further protection uh, just we have seen in the last lecture that the lungs are covered by the by the membrane known as what the covering of the lung is known as pleura same here the covering of the heart is known as pericardium note the point heart is protected in the thoracic cavity between the two lungs and also it is covered by the important membrane known as pericardium it is made up of three coverings or three linings the outermost is known as epicardium the middle is known as myocardium and the innermost is known as endocardium 
clear so these are the three coverings of the heart between the three coverings out of these three the middle and inner covering there lies the fluid it is um the it is known as pericardial fluid pericardial fluid and it gives lubrication it allows the free movements it protects the heart from it act like a shock absorber and it protects and avoids friction while beating of the heart and all that so it acts as a protective in function okay so uh, heart is protected by the pericardial covering okay now uh, considering the weight of the heart it is slight difference between uh, the weight of the heart in male and female but uh, no matter it generally varies about 250 to 300 grams average weight of the heart is 250 to 300 grams and it is just like the size of a fist of the person size of a closed fist is the correct size of the Uh, heart. So we have seen about the location of the heart, the covering of the heart, the shape of the heart, the apex and base of the heart, the pericardial fluid, its function, the weight of the heart, all about the external features, external features of the heart. Now about the internal features. when we learn about the anatomical structure one must include the external features the internal features and also if there occurs the microscopic structure we will learn about the microscopic structure of the nephron or kidney and all when there is necessity of learning the microscopic structure we will learn it but here um, considering the heart we are going to learn about the external and internal features of the heart so we have seen about the external features clear now about the internal features and study of anatomy is done by the dissection you know anatomy that means to cut to open when we cut the or we take the in uh, longitudinal section of the heart and open the heart what we can observe we can observe that heart is made up of two halves two equal halves it is separated into equal halves right and left side clear now the uh, you can uh, see the picture here two equal halves right and left the right uh, and left both having the a uh, transverse septum and with the help of the transverse septum it is again further divided into upper chambers and lower chambers upper and lower chambers that means totally if we notice the chambers of the heart their heart is made up of total four chambers the uppermost chambers you can notice in the picture uppermost chambers are known as atrium and the lowermost chambers they are known as ventricles so the four chamber in the name of the four chamber right atrium left atrium left right ventricle and the left ventricle so two atria the uppermost chambers of the heart they are known as atria whereas lower most chambers known as ventricles okay now the atria and ventricle when we observe a minute difference between the walls of the atria and ventricle here in the picture you can notice the wall of the atria are somewhat thin as compared to wall of the ventricles why this because the atria having workload very little they have to uh, contract very slowly and they pour their contained blood in the ventricles no any extra workload but uh, the ventricles having much greater 
um, uh, the force is needed to contract and to pour their contained blood in the particular artery because they have to supply all over the parts of the body so walls of the ventricle are much thicker note the point walls of the ventricle are much thicker than the wall of the atria and the interesting point when we compare the walls of the right ventricle and left ventricle you can again notice in the picture very clearly seen uh, you can notice that wall of the ventricle is um, thickest than the other three and as compared to the right ventricle it is much thicker why this because left from the left ventricle note the point from left ventricle the main artery known as aorta main artery aorta arises from the left ventricle and through its various branches it supplies the oxygenated blood to all the parts of the body through its various branches so left ventricle have the workload the much uh, that means um, the highest workload is there on the left ventricle so the walls of the um, left ventricle are much thicker clear now the um, role role of the atria and ventricle um, atria act just like, like the receiving chambers atria are known as receiving chambers as atria receives only the blood and can pour their contained blood in the uh, particular right atria pour its blood in the right ventricle uh, left atria pour its contained blood in the left ventricle just like that so the atria act as a receiving chambers while the ventricles act as the distributors ventricle distributes the blood we have seen that left ventricle distributes the pure blood through aorta to the various parts of the body and that process is known as the systemic circulation whereas the right ventricle pours it contained blood through the pulmonary artery towards the lung for purification and that process is known as pulmonary circulation we will see the uh, types of circulation so here we have seen that when we cut the heart we can notice the two halves right and left and each chamber is again by the transverse septum divided into upper and lower chambers the upper chamber are right atrium lower chamber are left ventricles just we have seen the four chambers and now about the valves valves of the heart uh, here in the diagram you can notice the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve or it is also known as mitral valve mitral valve so totally in the heart there are four valves note the point in heart there are total four valves where these valves are located the tricuspid and the bicuspid tricuspid valve is located between the right atrium and right ventricle you can notice here the tricuspid valve is located in the right and right atria and right ventricle whereas mitral or bicuspid valve is located between the uh, left atria and left ventricle clear now what about other two valves the other wall that means both these walls are known as semi lunar walls because they look like the half moon shape so they are known as semi lunar walls and these walls are located in the pulmonary artery and the aorta now here in the diagram pulmonary artery you can watch the pulmonary artery arises from the right ventricle right ventricle and in this right ventricle uh, you can notice the pulmonary 
uh, wall which carries the deoxygenated blood towards the lung so this is the, um, the this is about the walls of the heart here is the picture of position of uh, the heart and the coverings and the um, chambers now these are the you can say the conducting system of heart so very interesting how the actual functioning of the heart occurs now let me know from your side uh, heart is made up of special type of muscle and that muscles are known as the muscles located in the heart are known as cardiac muscle right what is the speciality of cardiac muscle can anybody cardiac muscle having special characteristic feature which is not seen in other varieties the first feature is the structure like voluntary but function like involuntary another feature is automatic rhythmic contraction without fatigue heart continues beating of the muscle continues contracting since since birth or before birth also it continues beating since birth till death without fatigue and in a automatic rhythmic pattern lub and dub this is the rhythm of the heart l u d b b and d u d b t lub and dub continuous if you uh, um, try to hear the sound of the heart you may hear the lub and dub these two sounds are produced by the closure of tri and bicuspid the first uh, sound is produced and when there is closure of the both the semilunar valves when get closed the second sound that is dub is produced clear so how the sounds are produced in the heart dub and dub now about the conducting system of the heart how the heart muscle works and how the blood is circulated all over the parts of body we were, we are not going so deep but you must know some important point that what is, is sa node sa node you can notice here where the superior vena cava now most before going towards this we have seen the blood vessels right the various blood vessels one minute huh? blood vessels here we have seen the blood vessels the artery arteriole and the smallest branch it get terminate into the capillary network you can notice here the capillary vein venules the small branch venule and again <laughs> the uh, venules and then uh, they form they unite with each other and they form the smaller veins and ultimately the larger blood veins and these uh, so the network of the blood capillaries is formed and the circulation one minute here the sa node av node um the superior vena cava how the vena cava is formed by the union of these small veins there form the greater veins so superior vena cava and inferior vena cava these are the two vena cava which collect the impure blood from superior part and inferior parts of the body that means from the head the shoulder the chest the upper arm and the inferior vena cava collect all the impure blood from the lower limbs 
the pelvic cavity the abdominal cavity and all the impure blood from various small small veins they uh, collect the impure blood and through the superior and inferior vena cava all the collected impure blood is poured in the in which region of the heart right atrium so note the important point right atrium receives the impure blood collected from the superior and inferior vena cava and the uh, where the sa node sa node is known as the pacemaker you may have heard the word pacemaker if it stops functioning the heart cannot work properly so cardiac cycle uh, may disturb so it can be changed by the operation yes. uh, and the uh, artificial sa node or pacemaker can be installed okay so sa node it lies at the entrance of the superior and inferior vena cava in the right atria so sa node then av node it is located at the atrioventricular opening so through uh, these uh, nodes the signal or the wave of contraction wave of contraction spreads because we know that the muscles of the heart they work automatic rhythmic contraction their function is automatically the when the atria both the atria get filled the sensation of the wave of contraction starts from the sa node and the wave goes up to the av node then it spreads downwards through the bundle of his and the purkinje fibers you can notice by the green colored uh, fibers excitable fibers so this is known as the conduction system of the heart tree uh, heart sa node av node the wave between sa and av node the bundle of his and the purkinje fibers all is the conducting mechanism and with this conducting mechanism the circulation of blood continually occurs uh, we have seen about the types of circulation there are two types of circulations pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation pulmonary circulation means what when the superior and inferior vena cava collects impure blood pours their contained blood in the right atria and what happens the tricuspid valve get open it pour the contained blood in the right ventricle from right ventricle when it contracts it uh, the uh, impure blood goes towards the lung that means circulation between heart and lung is related with the pulmonary circulation now the systemic circulation means when the blood is get it get purified in the lung what happens two from the right lung and two from the left lung so four pulmonary veins as it is vein but it carries the pure blood these are exceptional cases so four pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood through the right and left lung and pour their contained oxygenated blood in the left atria and same process occurs the bicuspid valve get opened the pour they pour their contained blood in the left ventricle and when le left ventricle get contracted it pours its contained blood in the aorta and through aorta and its various branches uh, the pure blood is circulated towards the all over parts of body this is known as systemic circulation that means uh, all um, blood reaches towards all the systems of the body these are the two types transports blood to and from all the tissues and pick up the waste and it supplies all the nutrition parts nutrients 
metabolic needs of the cells in the body and pulmonary circulation is uh, it involves only the heart and the lung so this is all about the heart and uh, the structure external structure internal structure the conducting mechanism the types of blood circulation all we have seen about the circulatory system now the next part of the circulatory system is the blood blood can anybody tell me about the quantity of blood present in adult human being how much blood is present yes anybody in an adult individual yes let me test sorry repeat how much 12 no 12 liters yeah four, four to five five liters approximately uh, blood uh, is present in the adult human being now blood is actually a mixture of solids in a large amount of liquid called plasma plasma is somewhat yellowish viscous fluid in the blood having 92% water and rest is the organic and inorganic material present so this is the composition of blood when we notice that here you can notice the two parts 45% and 55% 55% is the plasma and 45% is the blood vessels uh, sorry blood cells there are three types of blood cells found in the blood which are the three types rbcs wbc and the platelets rbc wbc and the platelets these are the three blood cells found in the blood rbcs are known as erythrocytes wbcs are known as leukocytes and the platelets they are known as thrombocytes erythrocytes leukocytes and the thrombocytes clear these are the three cells and uh, one must know the important points regard about these cells for example rbcs you can notice the color of the rbcs how they seem the um, they are centrally thin but at the sides they are much thicker just like the coin um these are about 4 to 5 million per cubic mm of blood their quantity is much greater rbcs you can see here the rbcs like a coin they are thinner at the center large surface area they contain the hemoglobin so rbcs look uh, red in color as their um, cytoplasm it contains the hemoglobin what is hemoglobin hemoglobin is actually the complex protein made up of heme plus globin heme is iron containing pigment which is red in color and globin is one of the type of protein okay and its main function is to carry the oxygen and when the uh, number of rbc goes in the lower uh, side what happens hb percent goes down what is the normal range of hemoglobin hemoglobin level in the blood should always be how much anybody knows this is between uh, 11 to 13 yeah that means it must be above 10 11 to 13 14 okay so that means 10 is uh, known as the boundary line 10 is the boundary line it should it must always be 
upper side of the 11 uh, 10 about 10 uh, because oxygen carrying capacity lowers when there is um, less quantity of rbcs are found so rbcs contain hemoglobin which have great affinity towards the oxygen and so it combines with oxygen and oxy hemoglobin is formed right it binds with the oxygen average life of rbcs is about 120 days note the point 120 days is the life span of rbcs you know in our body there pro the process of growth process of repairment and if the cell becomes beyond repair it dies in the spleen and liver and all the organs bone so this is the continuous process inside the body generation of cell growth and repair and death again new generation which is the exceptional case in our body the type of cells can anybody uh, tell me they cannot be generated once die they cannot generate again the nerve cells cells yeah so uh, the cells um, average life span is 120 days and be, if uh, death occurs here in the spleen and liver and the hemoglobin is converted into bilirubin and this bilirubin the liver cells pick up this bilirubin and add in the bile this is the process the main function of the rbc is to carry oxygen from the lungs to the body and carbon dioxide from the body back to the lungs this is the function of rbc now where these rbcs are form in the body in the red bone marrow of the long bones we have studied the long bones like the upper extremity lower extremity humerus radius ulna tibia fibula femur these are all the long bones and in the long bones the upper and lower end contains red bone marrow and in this red bone marrow rbcs are produced okay this is all about the shape size the function the speciality the life span all about the rbcs now let us see about the next cells in the blood that is wbc wbcs are also known as leukocytes and uh, uh these cells um as compared to rbc their um their number is 8 to 10000 only per cubic mm of blood 8 to 10000 per cubic mm of blood having different size you can notice in the picture uh, having different shape and different size and their nucleus you can watch it is also having bilobe trilobe or multi lobe nucleus and in all other cells in the body having a single nucleus which is mostly rounded shaped and located in the center but here uh, in the wbc the shape of the nucleus is um, changeable in some uh, in some uh, cells it is bilobed or other in other it is trilobed like that so depending upon the granules present in the cytoplasm these cells are uh, classified into granulocytes having granules in the cytoplasm and or granulocytes that means not having any granule in the cytoplasm eosinophil neutrophil basophil monocyte lymphocyte all are the types subtypes of wbcs okay the main function of the wbc is it helps in the body's defense mechanism it protects our body getting in, uh, um, infected De it destroys all the harmful bacteria and foreign material sometimes these cell eat the bacteria they fight the bacteria and so these are known as phagocyte 
and the action known as phagocytic action. The process of engulfing the bacteria is known as phagocytosis. So these cells overall help in the function of maintenance of immune mechanism of the body. Now the third important cells in the body, they are known as thrombocytes or the blood platelet. Red blood cells, erythrocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes and the third is platelets or thrombocytes. Their number varies from uh, 2.5 to 3 lakh per cubic mm of blood. And uh, also these are found or these are derived from the stem cells in the bone marrow. Hmm. One point is left in the WBC. They are formed in the, where WBCs are produced? In the yellow bone marrow of the long bone. Where yellow bone marrow is located? Between the shaft of the long bones. What is shaft of the long bone? The middle point, the middle point. The upper and lower end and the middle portion is known as shaft. Though in the shaft, there lies the yellow bone marrow and here the WBCs are produced. And uh, um, the lifespan of WBC is about 8 to 10 days. Two points were left in the WBC. Now coming to the platelets. 2.5 to 3 lakh per cubic mm of blood is the quantity of blood, blood platelets. These are irregular in uh, shape and size. Irregular, smaller than red blood cells, having no nucleus in the center. And these cells help in the most important function that is hemostasis. That means it helps in the clotting of blood or stopping the uh, bleeding. Bleeding stops. Hemostasis. So the thrombocytes are the blood platelets having 2.5 to 3 lakh per cubic mm of blood in number derived from stem cells of the bone marrow, their lifespan is about 8 to 10 days and they help in the clotting of blood. Now, uh, one must know about how the clotting of the blood takes place. For clotting of blood, the platelets play a very important role. But other than platelets, calcium, you know calcium, it is the mineral. It is also very essential for the process of clotting. And how the process takes place? When there happens any injury, blood comes in contact with air. Blood uh, starts flowing uh, through the veins and the, it comes in contact with the air. So when the blood platelets come in contact with air, the platelet get destroyed. And the platelet release one enzyme that is known as thrombokinase. This thrombokinase converts inactive thrombogen into active thrombin. Now thrombin is formed. This thrombin, uh, in presence of this thrombin, the plasma protein known as fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is converted into fibrin. And these fibrin, filaments of fibrin, they get intervened and a clot is formed. And the clot is formed. That means the fibrinogen, the prothrombin and platelets, they all play important role in the clotting of blood. Okay. So blood is, blood gets clogged. It requires very few minutes. So this is all about the clotting. Uh, the WBC having uh, play important role in the uh, immune system and also the uh, some tonsil and spleen. We will uh, learn details about the immune immune mechanism of the body later.
now the yogic point also is left about the circulatory system yogic point why it is necessary to learn about the circulatory system so thoroughly we have seen the very deep structure of the heart the function the types of circulation why it is necessary for you learning in the certificate course of yogic education because when you are going to practice various asanas like sarvangasan viparita karani halasan sam pranayam like ujjayi pranayam bhastrika pranayam sambandhas like jalandhar bandh sam kriya like nauli all come under the influence of blood circulation in all these asanas pranayam bandh mudra kriya what happens our blood circulatory system get affected so one must practice very sincerely very focus uh, and very concentratedly and uh, under the expert guidance because your blood circulation get affected uh, while uh, this type of practices so one must practice well under the expert guidance so that your blood circulatory system will get benefited and remain unwanted disturb unwanted disturbance in blood circulation will not occur it is our duty to learn properly because it uh, all these bandha mudra pranayam they affect our nervous or uh, nervous as well as the circulatory system also the patients having or the person having hypertension um they are strictly contraindicated doing such type of pranayam such type of bandha mudra and asanas so one must know one must check the blood pressure before practicing such a type of bandha mudra pranayam and the asana because it affects your blood circulatory system right another important point uh, for learning the circulatory system in the yogic point of view is that your heart rate and your blood pressure must remain normal that means your heart rate should be 70 72 beats per minute your blood pressure what is the normal blood pressure can anybody normal blood pressure ranges from any of you have measured your blood pressure no yes or no do you know what is blood pressure and what what is its importance yes or no then yes. it, it shows uh, how calm the body is and uh, if there's the no it ranges it, yes it ranges between normal blood pressure ranges between 120 to 120 bp yeah uh, the 120 is the systolic blood pressure when your heart contracts hmm, it is highest and uh, diastolic means when your heart is relaxed in the relaxed state that is diastolic so 120 by 80 is the normal blood pressure range mm of hg hg means mercury so this is the normal blood pressure so while doing any asan pranayam bandha mudra or any practices uh, in yoga your heart rate and your blood pressure must remain in the normal state if it is increasing too much yeah, your practice is going towards wrong side okay 
so one must practice under the supervision expert supervision so it will affect your circulation of blood then um interesting part various asanas are mentioned in yoga but shavasan shavas in shavasan what happens your blood pressure um becomes matlab uh, that means uh, it goes towards a uh, slight lower heart rate um, slightly get lower your blood uh, blood vessels get relaxed and your bio body all the muscles in the body and your mind get relaxed so it is very good asan for the persons having stress anxiety any type of worry and hypertension and all about the stress related disorders it is a wonderful practice now i am telling you one secret regarding the circulation uh, yogic practitioners if you observe or you notice all the yogic practitioner look always fresh and their face have a special glow, glow or brightness on the face why this happens i am telling you a secret all yogic practitioners they look always fresh and their uh, face glows why it is happens because when you practice yoga what happens your peripheral blood circulation is reduced and the circulation is enhanced towards your endocrine glands and your facial muscles the blood circulation the peripheral blood circulation is reduced and it is uh, transported towards or it is enhanced towards the endocrine glands and the facial muscles so there is no need of doing any makeup or all that and their uh, face uh, always look fresh and a glow occurs on their you know, uh face due to the fresh blood supply so this is the secret of the yoga practitioners uh high energy level okay now the blood pressure one must know about the um, minimum points about blood pressure actually what is the blood pressure it is the pressure exerted on the uh, by the blood on walls of the arteries it is highest during uh, uh, contraction known as systolic blood pressure and when the, your heart relaxes to refill it is the lowest lowest pressure that is known as diastolic pressure the systolic is 120 mm of hg while diastolic is 80 mm of hg uh blood pressure differs Uh, or some factors affect on blood pressure like your sex your age time of the day your posture exercise your emotions there are certain factors changes in your metabolic activities all can influence your heart rate and your blood pressure and um, what is the importance of measuring blood pressure you must measure your blood pressure and follow certain rules not to um, uh, having a patient of hyper or hypotension because if the hypertension becomes chronic it may damage your kidney brain stroke may occur what is brain stroke it is rupture of cerebral blood vessels and also the cardiac arrest may occur due to the hypertension so obese persons smokers constant mental tension emotion emotional tension all such persons are prone to develop the hypertension so one must try to maintain the uh, stress level whether it may be physical it may be mental or emotional because your stress level directly affects on your blood pressure and it gets changes so emotion a slight emotional changes 
what happens certain hormonal glands like endocrinal glands adrenaline gland this is create the adrenaline hormone it creates the pressure on your heart and your uh, blood pressure get dry and if it becomes chronic it leads to damage the kidney and the cerebral stroke or cardiac arrest may occur and you are so lucky that you have to part in the learning process of yogic education and through this yoga education you are going to learn how to maintain how to manage our stress our emotions and your thought process by practicing all the asanas and uh, meditative mud meditation mudra pranayam and all these three are um, the practices uh, change your thought process and uh, you uh, come to notice that your mind physical and mental uh, balanced you have achieved of course it requires continuous practice so this is all about the circulatory system so during the circulatory system we have started from the artery vein heart blood circulation conducting system the blood the composition the function and the types of circulation and the blood pressure and the various causes of blood pressure and how to maintain and what is the importance of knowledge of circulatory system while doing yogic practices all these points we have learned details in the circulatory system now here we have completed the circulatory system and uh, some time is with us so can we start the next system because i have um very few lectures in hands and uh, i have to cover another system also that is the um, digestive system so we are going to start the digestive system one minute slight intro about the digestive system we are going to learn the process of digestion and various organs of the digestion is the screen visible to you yes 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 ha huh. digestive system so um we have uh, 15 minutes in our hand we are uh, i am giving the intro about the digestive system today digestive system is the system which includes the ingestion of food digestion of food absorption of food and the elimination actually digestive system provides nourishment nourishment to all the cells of the body ingestion digestion absorption assimilation elimination all are the phases of the digestive system elementary uh, it includes the elementary canal digestive system includes the elementary canal which is a continuous tube like structure having mouth pharynx esophagus stomach okay stomach and the small intestine and large intestine so one by one we will uh, see the structure digestive system the various organs of the digestive system 
it is known as the gi tract git gastrointestinal tract it starts from the mouth up to the anus our mouth includes the teeth the tongue the oral cavity oral cavity the roof of the oral cavity is made up of what palate soft and hard palate whereas the base of the oral cavity is formed by the tongue and on both the sides of the oral cavity there are two cheeks this is the uh, overall foundation of the oral cavity so mouth consists of two pairs uh, two sets of the teeth permanent teeth and temporary or milk teeth milk teeth are 20 in number and permanent are the 32 in number okay all of you know the um, kinds of the teeth like incisor canine molar premolar like grinding teeth cutting teeth hmm? so these are the teeth and the important is the you can notice here the teeth they mechanically uh, break down food into very small pieces the uh, you can see the structure of the teeth the tongue here the tongue it is the muscular organ and the uh, tongue is actually it helps in chewing it helps in the swallowing mixing of the food it helps in the production of speech and it is also the sense organ for sense of taste these are the uh, interesting functions of the Uh, in, the, in the oral cavity I will mention here the oral cavity there, uh, there uh, is the uh, secretion of the saliva occurs through the gland known as salivary glands there are three pairs of salivary glands one pair is known as sublingual gland, which is located below the tongue. Another pair of salivary gland is located in front of ear that is known as parotid gland. <coughs> and the third salivary gland that is uh, located in the submaxillary region that is known as submaxillary uh, glands. So these are the three pairs of salivary gland which secretes the substance or secretion known as saliva. Saliva is secreted and it is carried towards the oral cavity and it mixes with the food. So it helps in chewing and it mix, uh, mixing of the saliva is the function of the tongue. Now the food part which is mixed with saliva it is known as bolus. Bolus. Bolus is alkaline in nature because saliva is alkaline. And most importantly, the process of digestion of cooked starch starts here. And all the cooked starch, it get converted into a type of sugar known as maltose. Right? That means the process of digestion of cooked starch starts here from the mouth. Now this bolus is transferred towards the esophagus. From pharynx it transferred to the esophagus. You know the types of pharynx. There are three parts of the pharynx we have learned in the uh, respiratory system. Nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx. From oropharynx it, it get transferred towards the esophagus. Esophagus is 25 centimeter long tube-like structure. It lies behind the trachea and it pierces the diaphragm and enters the stomach. This is esophagus. Esophagus secretes some mucus type uh, secretion and it moves the food from the throat toward the stomach. How the food bolus reach to the stomach by the muscular movement known as peristalsis. 
what is peristalsis peristalsis is the muscular movement by contraction and relaxation of the internal muscle a wave like manner is continuously formed that is known as peristalsis and with the help of this peristaltic movements the bolus is it get trans uh, transported from the esophagus up to the stomach now bolus is reached in the stomach how is the structure of the stomach stomach is j shaped muscular bag like structure and it stores the food but it stores the food up to how much time it is the temporary reservoir of food stomach is temporary reservoir of food it depends upon the quality of food and the quantity of food how much quantity of food you have uh, taken and of what quality of food you have taken how much quantity of food must take uh, be taken by a healthy individual can you uh, do you know how much food one must take according to yoga do you know your food uh, sorry repeat i said light food light food uh, meat ahar meat ahar that quantity i have asked you about the quantity how much quantity of food the person can take uh according to your size the palms of your hands three four according yeah according to yogic science if we consider the four parts of our stomach two parts should be the uh, food intake one part remain for water and one part remain empty for air this is actually the uh, quantity of food Seafood. one must uh, uh, depend upon quantity and quality what is the meaning of quality whether the food is easy for digestion or it is hard to digest that means uh, um, near about 2 and 1/2 to 3 and 1/2 hour food remains here in the stomach okay so uh, it is j shaped muscular bag like structure having the two ends you can uh, see the structure of the stomach here two ends upper end is known as cardiac end and lower end is known as pyloric end why it is known as cardiac end because it is very close to the heart cardiac end and heart um, is located towards the left side and the stomach is also located in the left hypochondriac region of the abdomen so uh, stomach having the parts like two ends upper end known as cardiac end lower end known as the duodenal end or pyloric end the dome shaped part you can uh, observe in the diagram that is known as fundus the middle part is known as body and the pyloric canal and the pylorus these are the curvatures uh lesser curvature and the greater curvature are the two curvatures of the stomach and when you notice the structure of the stomach when it is empty x ray of the stomach when the stomach is empty can clearly show the folds the folds they are known as rugi r u g a e rugi and what is the function of the rugi they disappear as soon as food is food enter the stomach and the rugi plays important role just like the mixer mixer grinder and uh, rugi mixes all the food part with the uh, secretion of the stomach uh, known as gastric juice in the stomach there lies certain glands in the walls of the stomach 
there lies the gastric glands and this gastric gland secretes the gastric juice this gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid pepsin renin like enzymes which help in the process of digestion hydrochloric acid is the very strong acid and it helps to kill the bacteria microorganisms if they come uh, the through the uh, food and uh, also hydrochloric acid helps in the process of digestion of protein um, on action of the pepsin pepsin and renin these are the two enzymes and also the lipids these are enzymes helping the process of digestion pepsin acts on the protein part of the food that means um the food which you are eating and which is rich in protein all the protein part or i can say maximum protein part in your food get abs uh, digested in the stomach with the help of pepsin and for the action of pepsin hydrochloric acid plays very important role if there is presence absence of hydrochloric acid there is a case in thousands of people one case may notice that there is absence of hydrochloric acid in their stomach the case is known as a chlorohydria and in such cases what happens their protein digestion cannot be properly take place and so this is the uh, <clears throat> function of the stomach rugi plays important role in the mixing temporary reservoir of food secrete gastric juice which contain hydrochloric acid pepsin renin lipase what is the function of renin it curdles the milk converts the casinogen milk protein into casein and the third enzyme is lipase which converts the uh, which helps in the digestion of the fat now this process of digestion takes place depending upon quality and quantity of food up to 2 and 1/2 to 3 and 1/2 hours what happens after that the other end known as pyloric end is closed up to this time and after the food the food when enter the stomach is alkaline in nature and it is called as bolus we have seen now the alkaline bolus get change in the acidic chyme because it is mixed with the hydrochloric acid so the alkaline bolus get transported transferred in the acidic chyme now this acidic chyme uh, is ready for the uh, next transportation that is it enters the small intestine from stomach it goes towards the small intestine okay now the uh, small intestine let's see the small intestine the small intestine it is roughly 7 meters long and it is having three parts which are the three parts of small intestine duodenum jejunum and ileum these are the three parts of the small intestine duodenum is somewhat c shaped uh, structure the middle is jejunum and the last part of small intestine is ileum lining of the intestinal wall has finger like projections called villi you can notice here like this small intestine the lining finger like processes you can clearly notice they are known as villi of the small intestine and, and these villi is take important role in the absorption of the nutrients all the nutrients they get absorbed through the finger like projections called villi which increase the surface area of the small intestine 
and what it absorbs 80% of ingested water all the vitamins minerals carbohydrate protein fats uh, all is absorbed through the villi of the small intestine and what about the large intestine large intestine about 1.5 meter long and it accepts what small intestine don't absorb small intestine absorbs all the essential nutrients and all the waste matter which is not required by the small intestine uh, it is carried forward towards the large intestine and it accepts all the material one the next part of the large intestine is rectum it is the again it is the short term storage which holds fecal matter before it is expelled out so this is the structure of the large intestine large intestine seems like this uh, the, um, the certain parts of the large intestine are ascending colon transverse colon descending colon just observe in the picture descending colon sigmoid colon having s shape and the rectum and the anus so these are the parts now uh, the ascending colon continues to ascend up to it touches the liver and where it touches the liver it trans it continues to trans uh, transversely it can come across towards the spleen when it touches the liver it gets folded and it forms the right angle and that right angle is known as right colic flexure hepatic flexure and the uh, uh, transverse colon when it touches the spleen at the left side it descends downwards and here again it forms the right angle that is known as splenic angle splenic splenic flexure and it get uh, it descends downward known as descending colon and the sigmoid colon rectum and anus these are the various parts of the large intestine it is 1.5 meters long which are the various functions of the large intestine recovery of water and the electrolytes formation and storage of the fecal matter fermentation bacterial digestion the food which is not digested in uh, properly it uh, it is transported towards the large intestine and here there are uh, many bacteria are present here in the large intestine they start digestion and uh, absorption of fat may take place and absorption of certain medicines which are induced through the basti karma as said in the panchakarma process of ayurveda uh, enema like that so all uh, these uh, medicines can get absorbed through here through the large intestine so these are the uh, various organs of the large intestine in the next lecture we will see the structure of the accessory organs which help in the process of digestion the most important gland is liver the pancreas and all other glands we are going to learn more about the accessory glands in the next lecture so we have seen here the intro of digestive system various organs of digestive system their anatomical structure and their functions in short clear you madam you, yes if any queries questions please ask uh now the time it's okay yes or you may send the questions is there any group form sir sandeep sir uh yes yes ma'am uh, then you can send your queries in the group and we will discuss your queries in the next lecture or tomorrow's lecture okay 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 thank you thank you so much ma'am for your wonderful uh, session
okay to we will meet in next session tomorrow morning 6 30 am session time okay thank you okay thank you, Hario. Thank you. Hario. Hario. Hario.